I'll be the one to take the risk to go and get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old now, I don't got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road, the rest get left behind. Yeah. To the hundreds, pledge allegiance, I stand. I'm going to pull for the fucking white sand. I give it all to this fucking man. Yeah, what up, what up, what up? been done before, then I know what I'm saying. Hey, Debbie. Yo, what's the deal? Y'all hope all is well. Welcome back to another episode. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. And I'm Spicy Mari. Hello. And this is another episode of the number one podcast in Los Angeles, Nice and Neat. As you can see, we have an incredible guest today. And, and for the audience, you guys have been asking for some good female energy, some well-balanced perspective. And I think today, fellas. Come on. I think today, fellas, we're going to give it to them. Yes, sir. We're going to give it to them. We got an incredible guest, as I said. We have Spicy here with us today. She is a relationship expert yep. and... I have some questions. I, hope I got you guys some got too. Questions I got some too. As well. <laughs> yeah. Spicy, you know. tell us a little bit about yourself. Come on. So I am a relationship expert, magnetic mm -hmm. matchmaker. I am the founder of the Spicy Life Relationship Consulting Firm, Hello. Uh, where I coach and counsel singles and couples to uh, attract their purpose mate and then also retain their purpose mate, right? To become the best version of themselves by being in alignment with their partner. Mm. Okay. Mm. Purpose mate. So that means we're gonna be giving a lot of game this episode. Oh, for all right, sure. So all you struggling singles. I usually charge singles. thousands for this. Wow. Uh, but I'm a I'm a kick it. Oh, oh wow. I think I can vouch for that. <laughs> oh wow. I think I can vouch for that one. Oh, you yeah. see spicy? <laughs> uh, yeah, me and spicy got a relationship. For Something. those of you guys that caught the first episode of keeping relationships spicy, I mentioned um, just a tip that you could use uh, for uh, staycations and just how to keep your relationship spicy, how to keep the relationship spicy. And I got my, one of the tips that I named about just writing notes um, about what turns you on to your partner. I got that from Spicy. So, you know, I got to give credit where credit is due. You know I love what it. I mean? I, I love mention, proud of you. I didn't mention her name in the episode, but since she's here, let me tell y'all, this is where I got the game from. Okay. So <laughs> no, I was proud of you and the conversation you guys held. I listened Thank to you. that episode and I was like, oh yes, look at these men over here sharing, being vulnerable. So if I was single and I'm watching or listening to this right now, I would probably get a notepad out. Ooh. You have to. I would probably get a notepad It's going to be out. one of them ones. Yeah, you might want to sit down for this. I don't know how deep Spicy's going to go, how many gems she's going to give away. But, let's you know, go there. I'm ready. Let's get into it. Let's start with something. First and foremost, off camera, we learned that Spicy is actually an acronym. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, let's start with that before we get too deep. What does Spicy stand for? Spicy stands for self passion, intimacy, communication, and learning to say yes. Those are the Ooh. five fundamental elements you need mm -hmm. for a healthy relationship. So if you don't have those five things, chances are your love life is gonna be struggling. Mm. And the, that is the method that I created in my uh, master's program in doing research around what you need in order to thrive in a relationship, right? And so when it comes to the curriculum that I give and how I coach my clients, they start with a spicy assessment so I can see, okay, where are you weak? And then where are your areas of improvement? Where can we grow you to become stronger? And then throughout 90 days, you are going through the process with me and I'm holding you accountable to becoming spicy. Now the spicy method, is it something that you kind of got to through through heartbreak, through trial and tribulation, or like, how'd you get through that? You know what I mean? Did you read a book and it's like, you know what, let me put these things together. I love that. Okay, so uh, research, right? So like you have to do it in school, like case studies, and mm -hmm. it was already on my heart. Like I already understood my purpose in life and mission, which is to restore the family unit, but me understanding mm -hmm. like where the challenges that we have in relationship and like the true... Um, story begins in my adolescence with like me seeing my mom jump from relationship to relationship, but liking when she was in relationship better than when she was single. Uh, we had more mm. money. We had, I had more toys, more food. Like I was like, oh, this is the best mom. Keep dating. <laughs> and so I would be going up to me in the grocery store at the gas station, pitching me and my mom as this amazing package. Oh. And so she saw like, oh, my daughter is good. Like my daughter has a gift, right? I had the gift of connection. And so my mom was married three times from just me like pitching her pretty much. And then she was like, let me direct this energy. Like you have a spiritual gift on your heart, but let me direct it so that you also have the education behind it so that you too also don't make the same mistakes as me in seeing that a lot of her self-worth was wrapped around relationship mm. and that she was not happy unless she was in relationship. Mm. And so my studies when I went to school was like, okay, why is that? What is it that we need? You know, and that's where the self comes from, like really understanding not just who you are, what you want and what you have to offer, but also like 
what does it look like when I truly do know myself and know how I operate in relationship so that that way I can actually attain my relationship goals, right? And be with somebody who's compatible with me and understand that my value doesn't lessen just because of rejection and that it actually looks like, okay, one man's no is another man's yes, let me keep going. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you create curriculums. You're technically a teacher. I think you <laughs> basically answered this question, but just for our followers, our listeners, our viewers, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Like what truly qualifies you to be a relationship expert? And like, where does that title come from? Because we see people call themselves experts all for the sure, time. For sure, for sure. All the time. And it's like, well, who gave you the expert title? <laughs> you Are know you what a I mean? self-proclaimed expert? And, 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 and right. if it is, that's fine, right? But like, where, how did, where did you get that from? Yeah, I love that question. Um, in order to really be qualified as an expert in something, you have to be in that, uh, that craft, right, for more than 10 years. Um, so is it 10 years or 10,000 hours? <laughs> Not because I, I, I've actually I heard saw that something before. that said 10,000 hours actually equals like five years. I've heard both. I have heard your theory on the 10,000 hours, but also 10 years when it comes to the profession, right? I've heard that so, too. Mm -hmm. So one qualified there. Then we talk about like academics qualified there, right? Check, check. I've done all my studies. I've taken my psychology classes. I've taken my um, sociology classes. I've taken my communication classes. Um, I've even taken a uh, digital media training around um, us dating in a digital age, like what that looks mm. like so that I can guide my clients more effectively when it comes to dating apps. And I know how to funnel you if I'm messaging on behalf of my client and helping guide them. I know how to get you to the date quicker than they would if they were just messaging on their own. Mm. So um, I've studied all areas of it. And then my research is what, yes, led me to my spicy method. But in addition to that, a lot of people are missing, which all of, actually qualifies me even more as the expert, is the experience, right? I can study books all day long, mm -hmm. but it's the application that really has also added to the expertise. So not only have I applied my method to my life, but then I also do daily case studies with my clients and studying and researching, okay, this worked when I guided them this way. This mm -hmm. worked when I you know, told him to execute this. This worked when I led them here. So then I'm able to look at my research and say like, okay, this data makes sense. This doesn't. Last element is the spirituality factor. It's not just science and it's not just emotional. There's also the spirituality behind it. I am saved and I use some of that method in on, my save. practice. Um, <laughs> yeah. Come on, say. And, and what I mean by that is whether you're a believer or, atheist or non believer, um, if we look at the research around relationships, right, pretty much a lot of the things that are uh, around relationship in the Bible, even if we look at like commandments or relationship experiences, um, I can find some type of data to support mm. that. And so um, if we if we really were to add all those elements together, right, like the metaphysical science and then also my life experience, it's made for this very enriching mm. life where I understand I'm put on this earth to help people become the best versions of themselves in solitude so that they can be in relationship or in relationship so they can reach relationship actualization. So like hits. <laughs> hey, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> so like, <laughs> drinking, I drink my own Kool Aid though. Remember, Yo. Will Smith didn't drink his own Kool Aid. So like hits. But check this out though. You said okay, your mission is to restore yeah. the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so like hits. Are you completely opposed to just dating for fun? Right? Oh no, for sure. You have or to go through you, that phase. You understand what I mean? Because yes. like, what if someone comes to you and say, you know what? I kind of just want to meet people so I could have fun and mingle. How do you approach that? Okay, so you would not pay all the money that you're gonna pay me for mm -hmm. that. Okay. <laughs> um, and and the reason why I'm saying that is is I don't need to help you get through uh, your whole phase. I don't need to help you get through your um, experimental phase. Mm -hmm. I am here when you are. Uh, at a point where you realize I've been successful in every other area of my life okay. except for relationships. Mm -hmm. There's something that is blocking me. Let me figure out what that mm -hmm. is. There's something that's holding me back from reaching my ultimate relationship goals, and I can't quite figure out what it is. Is it me or is it who I'm choosing? Or like, I get to the root of that for you. What's the difference between a relationship expert and a therapist? So therapy is going to tell you, um, or therapy is going to help you with self-awareness, okay? You're going to share your life experiences and they're going to ask you questions that help guide you to certain epiphanies about yourself, mm -hmm. okay? Oftentimes though, we will have an epiphany. Maybe we realize, you know what? 
I have a, a, an anxious attachment style. Maybe we just realized like that we are extremely insecure and uh, can oftentimes come off very needy in dating. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Therapist helped you get to that place. Me, I come in though, and the difference with me and a therapist is we go through self-awareness and after we have pinpointed why you are the way that you are, mm -hmm. right? Is that like environmental? Is it genetics? What were you predisposed to? Uh, is it your life experiences? All of those three things are the uh, all of those three things are energy factors. Then we look at okay, how do we now solve for this? And then I'm holding your hand and holding you accountable mm -hmm. as a coach to getting to the next steps. Mm -hmm. So you have 24 seven access to me where with therapy, it's like you, you do your hour, you, you came to this realization and now you're done. With me, I am very holding you accountable because no matter what you're going through, you're reaching out to me as you're going through it. So I actually implement the action plan with you yeah. in order to hold you accountable to achieving it. Yeah, now I'd imagine though, in, in something like dating and, and restoring a family, the results for everyone kind of looks different, right? So if I come to you, do your clients usually have a specific black and white result that they're looking for? Like, yo, I want to find my husband in the next year, you know? <laughs> or is it more of a, yo, I just want to find someone I can kind of build with and, and then, you know, figure it out from there. For sure. So everybody has different goals, right? And that's why it's tailored to you. So no, if you, all three of you guys have come and it could look completely different in what your guys' goals are, but the spicy method is going to be implemented every I single like time. That. So uh, based on what your goal is, okay, how can I help you achieve that? Mm -hmm. Majority of the times we will have a goal and the reason we can't get there is usually because mindset and emotions mm -hmm. are guiding us in a different direction that aren't helping us to make the behavioral change. Gotcha. So I'm helping connect the dots. And to your previous question, that's another reason that is very different from just therapy alone. Therapy is working on and focusing self-awareness. I'm working on self-actualization. Like mm -hmm. what does this behavioral change look like on a daily basis to get there? Mm. So this is this is episode two, essentially, of <laughs> keeping it spicy. This will be the remix episode, right? The remix, for sure. This is the remix, yeah, for sure, right? So in episode one, we talked about just how to keep our relationship spicy. Now we have spicy on, and there's some things that I I, I just kind of wanna I wanna get to the beginning of keeping it spicy because okay. when we talk about keeping it spicy, I feel like. You, you, you immediately start to think about just how to keep your intimacy levels high. Mm -hmm. So where is the beginning of intimacy start for, let's, I'll give you a real case study, a couple that lives together and you see each other wake up, you see each other go to yeah. sleep and you, you experience the monotony of that relationship. Where does the, how can you spark the intimacy in that? Okay, so I think it's really important that we define spicy first okay in your guys's definitions because i gave you my definition right mm -hmm. but like as and this is just me understanding audience and what they're looking for it, when you ask me questions like that i can give you a general like oh this is a fun little sexy thing that you can do but you guys were speaking to spicy last time as what sounded like intimacy building exercises when i was listening to you guys i was like oh this is how we build intimacy mm -hmm. and what that was was you guys creating a safe place for you to bond with your partner for you to share with your partner and for you to make your partner feel vulnerable mm -hmm. but oftentimes people will hear spicy and they think that it's how do we kink up our sex life mm -hmm. so are we talking about kinky shit right now or are we talking about intimacy building? Fellas? I think intimacy building. Yeah, I think intimacy building for sure. Like how to keep everything exciting. Not okay. just not just sex. Not so just that, sex. That would be not passion. Just sex. Not, not just sex. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that would be passion in the relationship. Well, well I mean, we could talk about the sex too though. I think think our for, viewers <laughs> I think, that, that, well, I think that's that. part of it. I, yeah. I think that's part of it for we sure. Could, we could cover it all. Um there is Six levels of intimacy. So, like, let's start with. Okay. Come on now. Let's start with. Come that. on okay. now. Hey, Go there. Get your, okay. no, get your notepads <laughs> out. Get I your think notepads out. As a society, um, we are very comfortable with uh, sexual intimacy, mm -hmm. right? That mm -hmm. is getting the busy. Um, that is you, you know, having your, you know, your sexual flings or you know, giving your body to someone. We're actually more comfortable with that than all the other areas of intimacy. So, sexual intimacy is one. But that is uh, the last one that I usually tackle when I'm working with my clients. We go through first emotional intimacy, mm. which is actually the hardest for everybody. Uh, financial intimacy, which is you don't think that you don't hard. think that was hard. Equally as hard. However, oftentimes uh, you will be open to speaking about financial intimacy with self, not so much with partner. 
with emotional intimacy, oftentimes we're unaware that we are even emotionally unavailable. Mm -hmm. So you won't even have conversations with yourself mm -hmm. when it comes to, mm -hmm. right? So like you may have conversations in your head when it comes to your bank account, you see that receipt and you're like, you know what? I need to do better at da 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 da. But with emotional intimacy, you may be shut down and not even realize that you're not even allowing yourself to feel. So the reason why I say emotional is because society has also uh, allowed and given permission for uh, us to be a very like goal-oriented, financially driven society versus emotional intimacy, I feel like is a new wave that we're now being empowered that our ancestors slash also our parents and our grandparents didn't get permission to be. They didn't mm -hmm. get permission to be emotionally available. So I think it's a new skill set that we're learning versus financial intimacy. Money has been important since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. So you're applauded with your financial intimacy. You're not so much applauded with your emotional intimacy. So that's why I, that's why I scale it or score it mm -hmm. a little bit higher. Yeah. But financial intimacy is pretty much there, right? If like 10 was, if, if 10 was the, the hardest when it came to emotional intimacy, financial intimacy would be right there at like a nine. So um, financial intimacy is the other one. Uh, spiritual intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, having those tough conversations about uh, your faith and why do you believe the things that you believe. Yeah. Uh, we oftentimes will even compromise that for relationship. Uh, the other element is recreational intimacy. And that's like the fun that you have with your partner. That's when like passion comes in. Um, and then the other element, which I told you early, is sexual intimacy. The other element that I think that we forget that's really important is intellectual intimacy. Mm -hmm. Like, can you respect this person's brain? Can you respect their mind? Can you learn from them? A lot of us get with people who we can't learn from. Yeah. And then we're upset later, like, well, he's not growing me or, you know, they're not growing as a person. And it's like, well, you didn't really respect their mind to begin with. You overlooked that because they were fun. So oftentimes we don't cover all of the areas of intimacy and we are blinded by sexual intimacy that we don't even get to the other areas and prioritize them because the sexual intimacy is really good. How does, just keeping what, what Jalan said, does a, um, a relationship, two people in a relationship, when you break down these levels of intimacy, these six levels, right? Mm -hmm. When we wanna, we're, me and my partner wanna work on intimacy, is there a, a specific one we should start on first? Mm -hmm. it, do we like just t a tackle it, it like, in, like in a collective effort like, how do we go about building intimacy within our relationship? Yeah. Should we start somewhere specifically first? Or, like, how does that go? Okay, so emotional intimacy is where I would say, like, let's start there. Mm -hmm. I actually recommend that before we have sex, y'all. Because <laughs> sex comes, and I'm telling you, the other stuff is hard to build. You don't okay. even know who you signed up so for. So then what does that mean then? So emotional intimacy. Emotional intimacy. Yeah. Right, what's the, what are practical ways that we could get to that? So understanding, right, first, if someone is, one, emotionally intelligent. So uh, what is their level of self-awareness? What is their level of self-regulation? Self-awareness is um, having your understanding about your emotions and how they show up in the world. So self-regulation is how do I control this emotion in reaction to my environment and my partner's emotion? Mm -hmm. uh, most of us are very aware, in this moment I'm mad. What we can't do is override that emotion oftentimes mm -hmm. and do what's best for the relationship versus what's best for ourselves. That Fs us up every time. So um, in addition to the emotional intelligence part, you're also gonna go through um, what is my partner's uh, empathy and social skills and how they show up in this relationship. If we're not really paying attention to all these things because we're just going off of how does this person make me feel, you're not really getting a strong grasp on is this person not just emotional, because oftentimes we think we're emotionally available because we're emotional. Mm. That was not the same thing. Mm. <laughs> you just succumb to your emotions. That's a bar. <laughs> That's a bar. <laughs> to be emotionally available means um, I am in tune with my emotions. I understand my emotions. And I'm going to give you the power to manage my emotions. And I want to be responsible for yours as well. I want to allow you to have a safe place to share. I want to be able to not just listen and feel your emotions, but I also want to show that I care. Mm -hmm. So a great place to start is with the intimacy exercise of share, inquire, response. Mm. Oh, you give giving away free game. That's free game. Are you, are you giving away exercise? Exactly. Only because it's you. Oh, share and oh, require response. I paid for that. So I paid for that. That's crazy. He, he, he paid for that one for y'all. That's crazy. Okay, okay, share, inquire, respond. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and, and let me tell you this. The reason why I can't give it is because um, there's a difference between someone who hears it versus someone who comes to me and says, help me apply it. I got right? you. Right? 
you guys can read all the books you want. You yeah. can listen to the podcast you want. You can, uh, I can spit game for days. Yeah. But you guys actually taking my advice. Have to execute. Yeah. That's why they that's why they come to me yeah, because yeah. they're like, well, look, I know what I should be doing, but I can't do it. Yeah. So that's why I will, too. I'm like, let me give you guys information. At the end of the day, I know my value and I know how hands on I am with my approach. You should, though. To see the work. Yeah, you should. Like, I heard somebody say that if you um, if you hold in the information and that means you don't know enough. Right? <laughs> oh, that's real. That's what I heard. Facts, that's real. That's what I heard. If you, if you keep the information yourself, you don't know enough. Right. So. Nah, give it away. Cause my that's, hope that's, is that whether you can, you know, uh, afford my my program or not, that you would still take the tools and like at least try in your relationship, right? Because if my goal is to help you restore the family unit, that means that you need to show up in the relationship, like ready to do some work, mm -hmm. whether it's with me or not. I expect y'all to do the work. So, in those, what was it? We said five levels, six, of six, six levels six. of intimacy, right? Excuse me, six levels of intimacy. I think that's important to understand that it's six levels because when something is lacking in your relationship, mm -hmm. it, you can identify which level of intimacy yeah. is lacking. So with O saying emotional intimacy, right? Emotional intimacy, sexual intimacy. I think as relationships go on yeah. and they are established, we are in a great place, the sexual intimacy can begin to be one of those things that are lacking. I think in the dating space, sexual intimacy is not something that really is yeah. lacking like that. For sure. It's just, it's not something that's yeah. lacking like that. But in a relationship, you could be hitting all five on the head, but that sixth one, and we're talking about sexual, does the structure change when you're in a relationship or is that always the structure? Is sexual intimacy always something that easy to get to even when you're in a relationship, you know, three years, five years, 10 years in? That's a good question. And this is gonna be a myth buster for you guys. Couples actually have more sex than singles. I know that's hard to believe, <laughs> but- is that a fact? But my man doesn't have to buy me dinner or fly me out to get the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, he doesn't got to do half of the stuff that you guys got to do <laughs> or the barriers that are put in place. So, it, so while it does feel like maybe you got more ass when you were single, you know, and you were in the streets, couples actually have more sex than people who are uncoupled. But with that being said, I love that yes, the sexual <laughs> intimacy does fizzle out. Part of what happens in relationship, and let's like refer to um, your spicy relationship as passion, right? Part of why the passion when it comes to relationship fizzles out is because what you were desiring in the beginning, uh, the only way to create desire is to not have something satisfied. Mm. So there has to be something that's withheld. There has to be some mystery. There has to be something mm -hmm. uh, uncertain. Yep. When we decide we're going to be in a committed relationship and make ourselves vulnerable to someone yeah, because we so want that security we want safety now we're in this safe place we know what to expect yep. we know that we don't have, have to worry anymore to but some of that worry and that jealousy and some of that stress that was originally created is also congruent with passion so if you are in a relationship where like things are starting to fizzle out right understand that in my adolescence i would have chosen i'm just put it out there in my adolescence i would have chosen passion over security in my adulthood as a grown ass woman, understanding how important relationship is, I'm choosing security all day. Because the difference is, is with the tools, you can teach passion. Mm -hmm. I can create, I could put a bed of roses out here. Y'all, let's just say you guys are my fellas and you're not romantic. I can create romance. I can create adrenaline in this relationship. What I can't create is security. I cannot make you guys honest, decent, good human, amazing communicators okay. that are committed to me. So when you say security, though, I, th I thought when you said security at first, you were talking about, okay, financial, financial security. You're financial just talking about just part emotional of security. Is somebody Emotional and everything. financial is a part of it. Okay. Everybody has their own definition of security. I define it as needing both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm going to just tell you straight up, yep. I need to know that one, yes, you will give me your last dollar, but that also you know how to make another one. Okay. And then two, I need to know that I am the priority when it comes to... Um, being your top choice in relationship that you don't desire anybody else. I need to, I need to know that you want to okay. commit a relationship with me and it is about us. I got you. So when it's, when I speak to security, yep. I'm talking about both of those things. I got you. Because when you are lacking without anything, right? When you're lacking a uh, commitment, when you're lacking finances, when, when you start operating from a place of lack, 
you then are operating in a scarcity mindset and you'll do anything to get that mm -hmm. back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll do anything. When you are starved, you will take anything, you will digest anything, you will step outside of your true self and your core values mm -hmm. and you become a beast. Wow. Okay. So Oof. I'm a I'm an advocate of boo, if you have security in the relationship, we can create the passion. We can create the spice. I have a very left brain, very uh, alpha, masculine energy driven man, not an ounce of romance. And I am perfectly okay with that because- Not he, an ounce he, of romance from your man. No. And I'm okay with that because he's, he's married Spicy Mahdi. I'm going to be the romance. You okay. worry about the security. You mm. make sure I'm good emotionally. You mm. make sure that we are supported, that the, the home, the mortgage is paid, and that my emotional needs are met. I will bring the fire and desire. Okay, but do you ever feel too much pressure to do that? No. Because usually- while you guys do, while you fellas do need that, your priority is always going to be um, feeling like you are the protector and the provider. If you are a real man, um, you are always going to feel like I need to focus on achieving these Wait, certain you said goals. Real man? Did you say real man? I said real man. She said that. She said that. Well, you had to. You got it out quick. Yeah, quick. We're not going. We're not going to pull that layer back. Hey. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Look, I'm, I'm, Carry on. I'm Carry on. Sorry. <laughs> I just want to make sure I, you know. Okay. And and what I mean by that is uh the 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 man who is honest with the fact that he is stronger, right? That he is the leader in the relationship and that that's what he desires. Mm. That, that that the goal is to protect, provide and make sure that uh me and my partner are well wow. and that's also too if he has a feminine energy woman but that's a whole nother episode if we talk about masculine oh women. My okay 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 second half i'm coming for you okay. hey hey, that, hey you could have taken somewhere else now <laughs> and i had to stop hey, y'all what's, what's the deal y'all what's the deal y'all welcome back to the nice and neat halftime show i'm your host omar we're sitting down here with spicy she's lacing us with so much game on just how to keep your relationship spicy we're back for another another episode of keeping your relationship spicy and uh Man, I hope y'all taking notes. I hope y'all picking up the gems that she's dropping. Big facts. She charges for these gems, bro. <laughs> Lots of money. She charges for these gems, bro. Omar Pick them paid y'all's deposit for it. <laughs> hey, hey, put them in your bag, store them for later, man. But with that said, I want to get to to one of my favorite segments of the show, Dim the Rules. Duke, I think we got a good topic for Spicy, man. Talk to us. Yeah, yeah. Let's take it back and let's let's go back to sexual intimacy. Okay. All right. So I got a question. Uh, you want to make an advance on your partner and you want to get it popping. Yeah. All right. Have you ever Try to make that advance and been turned down by your partner. I almost got turned down last night. Fellas, too. You, you, you guys, too. All right? It's for everybody. Look, I almost got turned down last night. Uh, almost. Almost. Um, cause almost don't count. Look. <laughs> almost don't count. Almost, <laughs> almost doesn't don't count because I made it happen. Um, sometimes just, and I'm sure you guys can all relate to this. We get tired and sometimes we just want to roll over and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm, this is going to definitely be too much TMI. Like, um, I'm, I'm nah, horny. I'm us. ovulating. I'm like, look, I lost all the baby weight. Like, let's get it popping. And my husband told me last night, he was like, I'm so sleepy. It's 2 AM. Like we finally mm. got the, you know, the baby down and mm. I, I got to wake up in a few hours. And I was like, I thought to myself and I was like, okay, I could be considering at this moment and respect his need for sleep. Or I could recharge our battery. And so I recharged our battery. I was like, uh, nope, we need to connect right now. Mm -hmm. I pulled down this, I was like, I'm just gonna hop on it, we're just gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And I made the initiation simply because I was like, look, we, we need this right now. I need this right now. It's more than just I'm horny. It's a way for us to connect and tap back in with each other. Okay. We work together. We, you know, are raising the baby together. Like at a certain point, we need that physical intimacy. And I know a lot of you guys could like relate to this. And you sometimes forget about sex. One of my spicy tips is put sex back on your to-do list. Like okay. put it actually on your calendar so that you can remember like, okay, check we're making money we're doing you know we got all these you know goals but sometimes you forget about the physical intimacy and making sure that your partner feels touched loved on rubbed on i know he has a better attitude in the morning when we do it yep. why am i gonna yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I got something i'm about to ask in a little bit like let me set this up for success i love that <laughs> i love that you said we gotta connect yes and when you said it this is gonna sound funny, but I got the visual. I'm pretty sure we have all seen Avatar. If you guys, if you guys haven't oh, seen, yeah, it. yeah, yeah. All right, so I, I, when you said connect, I really, I literally got the visual of the two characters taking off their 
whatever they put their hair together. They put yeah. their hair together and they're connecting. Mm-hmm. And it was like that was their their um their version of making love. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it really showed them connecting and tapping yeah, yeah. into each other's frequencies and being for sure. So I love that. I don't think we put enough emphasis on that when we haven't when, when we're saying we're having sex with our partner. Yeah. yeah. It's just like yo, we're just fulfilling each other's need, sexual needs. Yeah. yeah. Not, I'm connecting. No, know, I see it as a charge. In. You know, I love that you said yeah, that. Yeah, you said that you should um, just make sure you calendar it. Like, like take it to that level. Yeah, calendar it. But I think a lot of people feel like if you calendar it, it's not as exciting. Yep. It's not as spontaneous. Mm-hmm. And then it'll affect the way the sex is. Yep. Do you, what do you have to say about that? Let's just, let's, let's think of it as uh, hitting the gym. All right. Mm. I know I need to work out. I know I need to eat clean. Mm. I need to go, it's a squat day. I know I need to take my butt to the gym. But a million things wind up landing on my plate mm-hmm. and the gym doesn't become the priority. And now I have 10 excuses of why I'm not going to make it there. Okay. okay. There's a difference between that versus putting the gym on my calendar, getting that alert, that reminder already, maybe even putting on my gym clothes so that I'm already like ready to go. And that way I can anticipate and motivate myself when I see that daily reminder. Mm. So I think that while, yes, we want that spontaneity and we can try to aim for that, right? Like that can be the goal. I would love it for it to be spontaneous. At least if we know that it's set on our calendar and we have an agreement, it's a done deal because now we're both going to hold each other accountable to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Versus, you know, me doing it on a whim and just like, I just came home. Let me throw you on the bed after this podcast. Like that sounds great. And I can add that to the calendar, right? Mm -hmm. Then we get it in popping two times that week. But when you have two people who are focused on like, this is the goal, we know a certain time of the week Mm -hmm. we need to recharge. Sometimes it gets on the back burner. Like we need as much, we need to prioritize the sexual intimacy as much as we do even the other ones when it comes to our relationship. Okay. What about you guys? I'm more impressed. I'm still just, I'm more impressed that you, I'm just going to say it. This is how we were talking as men. You here, Spicy. You (laughs) joining us, right? I'm more impressed that you just went and you took it. Yes. And I feel like <laughs> as a woman, that usually is kind of like what we would do. We would just be like, you know what? I think this is something that we need to do for us. And, you know, once you once you once you start, you know, nobody going to be like, why am I doing nope. this? Yeah, no, nope. for, sure. for sure. So, sure. so, so is that something in your spicy courses that you teach to women like, yo, sometime he might not be in the mood and like this is how you do it? Yeah. So I think that. um being able to pivot between masculine and feminine energy is extremely important in relationships. The initiation. So anytime you're going for what you want or you're taking charge of something, right, that is masculine energy. When you're sitting in your feminine, you're allowing, you're free-flowing, you're flexible, you're receiving. Oftentimes as women, we just want to be in our feminine when it comes to sex. We want to know that you guys desire us yeah. and that you want to ravish us and that you take us down. That's a turn on for us. But it also sometimes is a turn on for you guys to not be the only time or the only person pursuing, to not be the only one in the relationship that's hunting Mm -hmm. or not to be the only one in the relationship that is making magic happen when it comes to the sexual intimacy. So in partnership, every now and then as women, we should take the lead when it comes to that. We should say, hey, let's take a moment, let's take a beat and just like focus on getting it busy right now Mm. or right maybe it's spontaneous like how you like but and maybe it's not so planned it can go either way but i think that it feels good for you guys when you see that we want you just as bad as you want us and that we're not waiting for it and society has told us as women just in general when it comes to dating wait 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 for it to happen wait for for wait for your needs to be met Mm -hmm. and i think we're finally like at a place where we're like, yeah, no, I'm not waiting. If I want some shit, I'm going to take it. So you're okay. saying good things don't come to those who wait. Good things come to those who hustle. <laughs> <laughs> While you're in they a relationship. Say, no, <laughs> I, they say, say good things come to those who actively P- pursue their goals. Pursue there their you goal. go. So I'm a huge advocate of that. My, my favorite Bible scripture, right, because I said it's like a mix of both, is asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find, knocking the door will be opened. That's I'm Matthew asking, 7, I'm I seeking, got that right here on my I'm phone. knocking. Okay. That's I my got scripture. that right here on my phone. Okay. I'm not playing. I'm leaving that. That's my okay. scripture. That is hey, my that's scripture. that's crazy. <laughs> that's my scripture. That wasn't playing. Nah. Okay. That nah. Is, <laughs> I read his arm nah. before the podcast. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Y'all talked about you first. I'm lying. I'm lying. Okay. Okay. But, okay. So. Wait, so you answered the question, no. No. You what? haven't been. What? So you, I said, have you ever been turned down? You said almost. Have I ever been what? Been turned down by During your partner. Sex. Oh, he's falling asleep on me. 
Like, but he's my never husband? actively been like, nah. nah. That's a turn down. That's no, a turn down. he has said no. Asleep? That's, a I, passive, that's a passive turn down. That's a passive <laughs> turn down. <laughs> he has told me no. He told me no last night. He, okay. he, he has rejected me. Uh, people, men who I've dated in the past have rejected mm-hmm. me, right? They played me to the left. Like, I thought we were going to get it on and popping again. I didn't get the call back. I got ghosted. Like, I've been through yeah. it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's that not, so I don't think that's what we're talking about. I think we're talking about in the moment, In the moment. Right? In, the moment. in the moment. Yeah. In, in the, the moment. moment like, hey, babe, I want to have you, sex. I really want to have sex with you. You telling me no or you not reciprocating, right? Got my hands all over you and you're not rubbing on me back. That's still a form of rejection. Okay. Mm. Now, is his intentions to hurt me? No. Absolutely not. Okay. Did he mean to snore when, you know, before you. I got out the shower and now I'm like, like ready to go and he's asleep? He said, yeah, I can't wait to get home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you come home. He's like, shit. <laughs> Snoring uh, like, shit while you like yo, give yeah, that's me what one we, minute. Look, we about girl. When you do that, if you if that's what we supposed to do tonight, and I come home and you sleep, like you Eskimoed on me oh, last man. night. You Eskimoed on I'm me. Eskimoed on me last night. I'm hot. It happened. That is real. Like it's real. And the kind of there also is this comfort of if we don't do it tonight, there will be another night that we could get to it. Versus when you're dating and she tells you you can hit, you try to take advantage of it. Like when you can get it. All right, all right. So in marriage, that's or even in just the committed relationship. Sometimes you can get comfortable with being too comfortable. So yes, I've experienced the rejection, but I know that if I touch him here, 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 and here, I will get what I want. I know the hot spots. Hey, before we get out of this uh, halftime, let me ask you this though. So I know everyone's different, okay? But on average, what do you think that, what, how, how often do you think people should be having sex by the week, by the month? Um, to have a healthy relationship. So the reason why I'm not going to give a specific number is because I don't want to shame anyone who is listening for not achieving that number. Okay. I think that you need to set for uh, your relationship a healthy expectation based on your needs. Okay. Right? Because if you and your partner aren't in alignment with, like, when we desire it, we have it, um, then there's probably some things there that we, like I said, need to put sex back on the calendar. But maybe you're not pleased with your partner and maybe that's not why you're having sex. Or maybe um, you and your partner desire two different things in order to get off. Those are conversations that need to be had. So if I tell you it needs to be two to three times a week and you can't achieve that, now I'm messing with one, your esteem or you mm-hmm. thinking that your partner doesn't mm-hmm. desire you. So the reason why I don't, I don't like to give that specific number mm-hmm. is because you have to create that for yourself. Everybody's relationship is different. Mm-hmm. What feels good for me, I may want, you know, five times a week, but... Maybe I'm only in a relationship where I get it six times a month. Like, you have to do what's best for you and your partner. Mm. Okay. Does that make sense? Makes yeah, sense. Makes sense. Back, back to the original question. I just want to know something right quick. Back to when it comes to who gets turned down the most. <laughs> right? Who do you feel like takes it more, takes it harder to get turned down? Oh, women for sure. For sure. Um, reason being is because we're not conditioned to uh, yeah, rejection. successfully experience rejection. Yeah. And what I mean by that is falling and getting back up. Mm. Uh, we, Because we aren't usually the initiators when it comes to relationship or even when it comes to a, a lot of things in life, um, outside of career, which is still fairly new within the like, last 50 to 70 years, um, when it comes to relationship, we don't know how to take a licking and keep on ticking. Mm. Right. Like it takes us out for six months. Mm-hmm. It, anytime we're told no. Right. I can go holler at someone so and he tells me he's not that into me. And now I'm like, oh, I'm never dating again. Right. I'm never introducing myself to a man again. Right. Whereas like you guys have had permission and been trained to pursue, 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 hunt, hunt, hunt. Mm-hmm. And number, numbers game. just because something is a no. I'm going to turn it to a yes. Like 10, you guys understand you that. That's you real. guys understand that, and that's what I teach also my women when they are in the program is, like, how we keep on going. Like, mm-hmm. it's not an L, it's not a, le- it's not a loss, it's a learning lesson. Mm-hmm. Like, let's keep going. Wow. Do, I guess. Do, I guess. Listen, I, I, listen. listen. Hey, if you ask me. <laughs> hey, look, we got a lot of game, but listen, if you're asking me, well, if I'm asking me, have I ever been turned down? I've never been turned down by my girl. That's good. I've never, but hey, what I'm saying is, maybe she's a trooper. Maybe she's a true. Maybe she holds it down. Maybe she's a true. You feel me? Maybe yeah. she really holds it down. But I can never think about a moment I was like, nah. It's crazy because I initially was like, hell no, nah, I ain't never been turned down. But 
well, now as I'm sitting here thinking about Spicy telling her telling her experiences about sleeping, yeah, sleeping. sometimes sleep. that, yeah. that yeah, is I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I been turned <laughs> that's down a, a nonverbal turn down. I just don't think you be asking down. enough. Yeah, not like hey, like a like a no. I never got a no. When but, you start, we but, start rubbing on that leg. So you never got a not right now. Not right now. Not right now. Not right now. It's not the same thing as no. That's a that's a no. That's no, it's a, not. That's a passive turn. That's uh, a person. Not right now. Not right and now. When right we now. get to it, that's not a no. That's not a that's a postponement. <laughs> okay, and that's, that's a, not a cancellation. That feels better. That feels better than, <laughs> than saying no up front. Yeah. But so so yes, and if we were at a job interview and I was like, you, I'm, I'm gonna give you this position, right? Like, uh, let's say you know NFL, or whatever, because that's what your guys' mm -hmm. you know jam is. Uh, you're gonna be on the team, but not right now. You would take that as a like. So when am I gonna be on the team? Like, well, I'm gonna I'm play. I'm gonna play you next year. You're gonna make that that's cut great. next year. That's great. <laughs> You'd be like, oh no, nah. like that's a no. Like, pretty much, y'all don't want me right now. That's how you would take it. Fair enough. And dip. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on though. But, but you're right though. But but so like just really quickly, right? Because we gotta answer this question definitively. If your partner isn't sleep. You gotta push through. That's what you're saying. If your part, you mean like if if you're awake and I'm watching TV and, and you need that. As long as your partner is not asleep, you push through. I think that we should always operate in a place of um, what do we need right now for the relationship, and that needs to override uh, any selfishness that's going on. And but I and I don't want you to misconstrue that with like uh, your alone time or self care. I do think you should always pour into yourself. But what I'm saying is. Uh, when it comes to you deciding to be in relationship that is relational. And so it's not about me in this moment, it's about us and what serves the greater good. And if you can always remember that in the choices that you make in the relationship, you will make a lot of choices that there's a huge return on investment later. Mm. Does that make sense? Makes sense. sense. So like, yeah, even if I don't feel like it, I'm a, and he taps me on the back, I'm a submit. Yep. Okay. Submit, there go that word, it came back. <laughs> hey, it came back. Should, should keep on coming. Come on now. All right, but, uh, and them? The rules. <sighs> Man, if you guys haven't already, head over to niceandneatthepodcast.com, check out your merch. We got shirts, we got hats, and sign up for the newsletter, all right? Become, um, what is it called? Subscribe A subscriber. To our, subscribe to our <laughs> mailing list, sorry. No, become subscribe, one of our family members. Subscribe to our, ma our mailing list, become one of our family members, stay up to date with anything we got going on. And uh, yeah, just, I always got to remind you guys of that because I don't feel like I'm doing a good enough job of that. We're not doing a good enough job of that. Matter of fact, also, I've noticed that there's a lot of, a lot of you guys that are viewing this, these episodes and you guys aren't subscribing. Click that button, man. Subscribe, support us, man. Get down with the gang. We really appreciate it. And um, we're happy to help you. We're happy that you guys are helping us grow. Yes, so with sir. that said, we're going to conclude this week's halftime show. We get to the second half, the only way we know how. That's just some positive energy, some positive vibrations. Of course, half, Yo, so in the first half, I got cut off by the halftime. My bad, my bad. <laughs> I got cut off by the halftime. I was excited to get to this point. You said something that really sparked my interest. You said, as long as the mortgage is paid, you know, he's worrying about protecting, he's worried about providing, mm -hmm. you'll bring the spice, you'll bring the sexual intimacy, you'll bring that, you'll bring the romance. And that made me think about healthy expectations in a relationship. Yeah, for sure. I wanted to talk about healthy expectations in a relationship because a lot of times people say expectations will lead to frustrations, you know, but when it, within a relationship, when are expectations and holding each other accountable for what you provide and what I provide, when is that just like, when should we talk about that? When is that something that's important? Okay, ask me specifically. Well, in the dating phase, are you saying should we talk about expectations or no, we, relationship? committed relationship? Okay, so we're in a committed relationship. I think that you should always be checking in with your partner and reassessing, am I satisfying you or are you satisfying me? And so sometimes that's, once again, I love a good calendar, you guys. Sometimes that's just like making an appointment with your partner about discussing these things because we get so inundated with our everyday lives. Like we have so much going on that you do need to check in with each other the same way you would when it comes to like a review at work. You, you guys do that for the YouTube channel. Like what did well, what didn't? Mm -hmm. You guys care about growing your numbers. I care about growing intimacy in the relationship. I'm gonna check in with my partner. So I think that you should constantly be asking like, where is my area of improvement and what about you? You don't have to say it in those words exactly. But um, I think that expectations jack you up when you have them and you don't communicate them. I okay. don't, it's not that I'm against expectations. I actually think that it's natural for us to have those. But if I don't communicate those to you or even allow a space of patience for you to try to execute those, I'm going to be super hot. I'm going to be disappointed every single time. Mm -hmm. 
And I don't think that even when we ask our partner for something, we expect them to just execute. We don't give time for them to learn that thing, for them to grow in that area. We don't even massage the ego enough in order to get that. And so you started off with asking, uh, or me understanding like maybe what my expectations were from my husband and vice versa. At any point, he could change those, right? He can, he can say like, you know what, I wanna take over the romance and you know, maybe you worry about like X, Y, and Z. That will have to be revisited. <laughs> um, but this is not to say that you don't hold your partner accountable for the needs that you have. And oftentimes when I'm talking about uh, us as women sitting in our feminine and bringing the passion to the relationship, a huge complaint will be that he's not passionate or he's not romantic. You are asking your man to transition into his feminine energy for you. And so with that, you are asking for something that one, he may not be the best at executing, can you help in that area if that is something that you truly desire, right? And I think that sometimes, uh, you guys are gonna hate me for this, but sometimes we are unfair as a species because if the expectation was that maybe I'm really good at uh, male gender driven things, and what I mean by that is in order to love me, if my husband's prerequisite in order for us to have a healthy relationship was um, me helping him uh, with carpentry or me helping him with like uh the, the transmission you fail what i would be like <laughs> you fail you guys want to have a relationship yeah. uh, i don't know and there's not much that you guys ask us to of to do that requires us to sit in our masculine energy like gotcha. that where we ask you guys often i want you to sit in your feminine energy for me i want you to sit in my your feminine energy for me so which means you guys have to pivot back and forth and trying to figure that out mm -hmm. versus I can either waste a lot of time being upset that you aren't feeding my love languages, or I can make it very clear for you what those needs look like and even help contribute to providing those. Mm. So what I mean by that is, is when you have certain desires of your heart, we oftentimes really appreciate when our partner is just thoughtful on their own and figures those things out and surprises us. However, if there's something that you truly desire if you communicate the expectation and you give them an opportunity to execute, right? Cause you guys, if you're sitting in your masculine energy, you guys like to win. You guys like to, how can I do go from gone. A to Z yeah, and yeah. finish this goal? And then the return on my investment will be, she will be happy. Mm -hmm. And then therefore I get peace. Mm -hmm. Us as women make it very difficult sometimes because we're like, well, I don't want to tell you what to do. I just want you to know what to do. And then we throw a pity party cause we didn't get it when all you had to do was just let him know and guide him there and give him you know an opportunity to do it and so what will happen to the other element is we'll tell you over and over and you guys don't do it and then it becomes nagging and now we're the bad guy do you feel like you ever have to change your messaging um when you're speaking to women about hey here's some things that could help you right and you're being brutally honest with mm -hmm. women and you're saying things like Okay, well, all you got to really do is this for men and, you know, does it, does it, and you get that pushback. I heard we were talking earlier, you were saying, like, if you say men are amazing, you're going to get all this pushback from women, right? Knowing that, does that help, does that change your messaging or does that kind of make you go harder into, into what you're saying? So I think with any conversation, just communication, you have to know your audience, right? Mm -hmm. So I, based on who I'm talking to, will assess, is this a, masculine energy female or a feminine energy female Got you. based on what she actually likes and what she desires of her heart. Mm -hmm. And this is going to get a little complicated. If she is a masculine energy driven female and she wants a masculine energy driven man, she is going to be somewhat upset about what I have to say, because there has to be a shift in energy for polarity mm -hmm. to happen. Mm -hmm. If she's a feminine energy woman, or if she's just a masculine energy woman, comfortable with a more feminine energy male beta, um, I have to tailor my message towards that and helping her achieve that as well. And oftentimes the problem when people don't haven't done the growth work is they one, don't really know how they show up and two, even how to get it. Mm -hmm. So based on who you are and what we derive at, that's when I can then guide you. But I don't just start off like spitting advice. It's first you. let's assess who you are mm -hmm. and what you want. And then are you even compatible with that? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are confused. They don't know. They're just going off of what they see on social media or what they maybe even saw at home growing up, but that doesn't really even serve them. And they aren't willing to bend in certain areas that they need to in order to even get what they want. You mentioned the word polarity. 
And I noticed in your bio, you have, you're trying to connect the superior man <laughs> to the superior woman, right? And I've recently been going back into the, the way of the superior man. Good job. And he mentions polarity, right? So yep. do you dig into the way of the superior man for your teachings, for your clients? And Absolutely. Um, one of my absolute favorite books, if you guys haven't read it, you should totally read The Way of the Superior Man. Um, what I am currently writing right now is my version of that for women to have a better understanding mm. of how we show up, right? I feel like that was like a great guide for you guys as men. Um, well, I feel like it's a great guide for women too, though. But it so, does give, that's what I was going to say. Yes. Like a woman should read it too, because it gives insight into not just, um, how she shows up, but also, uh, what that energy will bring out in her partner if she behaves a certain way. And also, too, the most People important like thing. People like that word, though, behave. <laughs> no, you don't tell women to behave. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it's important to understand your skill set and do you actually know how to motivate your partner to get your needs met? Um, do you actually understand what makes this person move? Do you understand really the power of energy management? And what I mean by that is, if I do this thing, do, will I get this reaction from you? If you don't know how to to facilitate that. If you don't know how to guide, you're going to be in a lot of trouble when it comes to relationship. Is this making sense? Any, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone of y'all ever heard of energy management? <laughs> no, nah, I was going to say, I I've really never like, heard of that before. I really like energy management a Thank lot. Thank you. I teach it in my practice. Nice. Okay. <laughs> I think though, um, you should both have your list of ways to spice it up, right? So in revisiting um, the spicy tip jar, which was the spicy tip bowl that uh, you had done with your partner, um, it is, okay, coming up with this list of things that you desire that you want to try with your partner, right? But in addition to that, we put an affirmation to remind them about how much we love them. Um, but when you have your list of like, well, I, I'm open to this and I want to try these things, you then ask your partner like, are you comfortable with this and do you want to try these things? And then we begin to actually execute those things, right? It's a negotiation. Well, yes, I'm willing to do that, but not that. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have permission to like say the same thing and have a conversation about it. But that conversation will look like hot and cold. It will look like, yep, I think that's hot. No, that's cold. Mm. And you will also do that physically when it comes to touching. I believe in hot and cold. When you are in the dating process before you guys uh, have sex, you can play hot and cold. Or when you're in the relationship, you can play hot and cold where you guys lie each other down and you ask each other how something feels. Like, is this a turn on for you when I touch you here? Is this a turn on for you when I touch you here? So then mm. you tell your partner hot or cold based on how it makes you feel. Mm. So you can always use hot and cold with anything, even when it comes to your finances. Like, uh, can I get that new purse? You're like, nah, cold, 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 <laughs> right? So um, hot and cold can be used oftentimes with what you're comfortable or comfortable, yeah, comfortable with. But taking a trip to Pleasure Chest, and the reason why I say that one is because I take clients there and, um, Pleasure it's, chest. Yeah. Is that, is that an actual place? Yeah, oh, it's an actual the, place. Okay, um, I was about to say, because we don't have to open a pleasure no, chest. It's, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's really awesome because they also have like um, comedy shows with comedians who come in and crack jokes about sex, right? It like loosens up the ice. They also have uh, intimacy building workshops where you actually get to do sexual yoga with your partner and you can come and do. So you have Boom. to actually, in order to get creative and Boom. keep the spice in the relationship, if you want passion, you have to really do some research if you're not a person who naturally is a creative, yeah. right? So as, as long as you guys are fair with one another and you're not forcing your partner to do anything that they're not comfortable with. Okay, forcing on that, Yeah. right? If you're bringing things to your partner and it continued to like cold, that's cold. Right, like not that, happening. Cold, 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 Antarctica, motherfucker. Yep. Glacier cold, yep. right? <laughs> sub zero, was sub okay. zero. <laughs> at what point does like that partner have to compromise like if one mm. partner continues to bring things and they continue to get shut down right that at some point has to become discouraging for one of those partners right so like how what does the other partner do in that situation do they have to just be willing to do something they're not comfortable doing or how do they get over that hurdle within their relationship that's a great question i think that it's always a negotiation mm -hmm. so like in it within my program uh of spicy yes is the part that people actually score the lowest in when it comes to willingness to say yes to things right because we have a fear of a lot of things or maybe we get too comfortable or maybe we just don't know how to advocate for our needs so when you're dealing with a fear of the unknown it can also sometimes create anxiety 
So if your partner is approaching you about something and they're asking over and over and over, and now it just sounds like nagging, mm -hmm. if it goes against your core values, your belief system, or um, it's going to make you even maybe disgusted with yourself or maybe not even look at your partner the same, you have to stand firm in that. And what you do in response is a negotiation. Baby, you know what? I can't give you the threesome. But in exchange for that, we can make a, maybe a sex tape that only you and I get to see. Mm -hmm. You know, that's out of my comfort zone, but I am willing to do that because I love you and because I trust you. Mm -hmm. However, I don't want to eat pussy. I, have, I don't, maybe I don't have a desire to it. Or, you know, <laughs> you won't let me maybe bring in an extra dick, so I don't think it's fair. Like, there could be <laughs> yep. all kinds of, you know, yep. dialogue around this. Whatever your reason may be, I'm just using it as an example you have to negotiate with your partner so that you guys can both walk out feeling like, well, at least I got something and they can feel like, okay, well, at least I please him and I got my needs met in return. Mm -hmm. I think everything is about essentially compromise. Mm -hmm. But when we say compromise, I don't mean you get 100% of your need met and I suffer. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get 50, I get 50. Mm -hmm. Okay, spicy. Wait. You about to close it? No, nah, not yet. Okay, cool. <laughs> not yet. I got it. He's I, like, we're just going to go over time. <laughs> the spice is nice now. Yes, the spice <laughs> is nice. Hey, so I need a script now. All right. So let's get real specific. Let's say you're a woman and your man is not pleasing you sexually. Okay. Okay. And you don't want to hurt his feelings. You don't want to bruise his ego. Mm -hmm. All right. But you really need him to step his game up and change whatever he's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, let's say he is not um, going down on you the way you would like. Mm -hmm. How do you bring that to his attention without bruising the ego and, and, hurting, his, and hurting his feelings? Like, what are, the, what are the words you say? Like, how do you open that, that line of communication up? Is this man a good listener? Um, your let's say he's situation? a good listener, but let's say he's really he, he really thinks highly of himself. Mm, he ego. Think he it, yeah, and okay. I think you putting it down. Let's say that. Okay. Mm. Um, so we're always going to build the shit sandwich. Uh, we're going to affirm him first and tell him what we really do love that he's doing in the bedroom, okay, how he's overperforming. Um, so babe, I think that it's incredible. I love the way that you grab my neck okay. and you pull my hair. Okay. I love when you smack my ass. Affirm I would first. even love it even more though. <laughs> if you maybe licked my clit a little bit more this way, um, before you stuck it in, I'm just, I'm going to be vulgar. Yeah, with yeah, you. no, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, do you, this is important. Do you, this right. Is, take notes, fellas. The party is around. Do you, think that, do you think that that's something that you will be open to? Maybe performing a little oral like this? Okay. Um, and you would talk to him about essentially like what your need for the oral looks like, like what, how you would like him to perform it. Okay. And he will give you, he will say yes or no. Okay. The reason, the, the question is very important afterwards following because he needs to make it, he needs to believe it's his decision. Mm-hmm. If I command it or I demand it and I didn't stroke your ego in advance, mm. um, all you're going to hear is the negative input that I'm giving. Mm. So I'm giving you the affirmation that I'm asking for your permission for something. You have to buy into it, believe it's your idea, mm. say yes, and then I have to reward you afterwards for being open to the conversation. And once again, saying, oh, my God, I appreciate you being so open about this. Mm. Once again, I love how great the sex is. I love when you, you know, um, put me first and ravish me. Um, thank you, baby, for this conversation. Mm. Now, as a as a woman, how would what would you want to hear a guy say to you, right? Let's say, hey, yo, you're not riding me like the way I want you to ride me, right? How do I how do I break it to you <laughs> without hurting your feelings? Could we just we we already established that women take it a lot harder than yeah, men. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so, and I can even give you like my personal example. Okay, uh, go there then. Yeah, I'll I'll give you my personal example. Um, I didn't. I thought that I was the mom at riding. Um, prior to my husband, um, he actually taught me how to ride. So for, fortunately, because I did the check-ins, I was able to say like, is there anything I can improve upon? Mm -hmm. um, and we were able to have a dialogue around the conversation of my performance, right? So like mm -hmm. he did, he definitely affirmed me and was like, baby, I think it's the most sexiest thing in the world. Um, are you comfortable with me guiding your hips next time we do it? Mm. So he didn't necessarily give me the constructive criticism. He allowed me to buy into giving him permission to instruct me in the midst of it. And I was like, leader. yeah, absolutely. Tell me what you want me to do Amazing. when we do mm -hmm. it. Great leader. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. When I tell you I have the superior man, y'all. Hmm. Did, that, did that like hurt your ego a little bit at first though? Well, I, or so let me say this. Yes, because at first it was a like, Hmm. So I must not be performing that well. 
Um, but because the goal is to be better, mm -hmm. I overrode that emotion for mm -hmm. what serves the greater good of the relationship. And maybe I'm not b busting as well as I could be. And because I trust him and his leadership, I was able to say, like, this isn't so much about me. It's about him and the experience that he's yeah. giving, right? Because oftentimes when we get constructive feedback, we internalize it. Yeah. And we don't like it because it goes against our self-image, gotcha. right? I believe myself to be amazing at this. And mm. you don't believe that. And that is hurting my ego. Mm. So if you can stop for a second and say, like, why does this bother me versus... Um, and not reacting to that. It's okay to have something bother you, but not reacting in a way that doesn't serve. Mm. So upon him presenting that to me, I was like, absolutely, because I want to be better at this thing. And then he did instruct me, and I was like, oh, this is the best. I thought that I could really get it popping, and I was actually lazy in my performance. Okay. Is it making sense? It's yes. Making yes. Okay. Sense. <laughs> it's great because there's two things that people struggle with sexually. It's like, yo, like, I really don't like how she does that, but I don't know how to tell her. Right. Or like, I really doesn't like, don't like how he does it. I don't know how to tell him. So just hearing that, I'm pretty sure people, hopefully people are taking notes. In a know. perfect world, you would love your partner to be able to instruct you off the jump automatically why it's happening. That's usually if you do it in a loving way, a safe yeah. place. But um, you will get your person in your head in that moment yeah. if the moaning and the ooing and the eyeing aren't enough signals and cues for them. Mm -hmm. So you table the conversation for when they're open to receiving mm -hmm. it. Got you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you want to um, say something? No, no, nah, nah, I'm good. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> you good? Yeah. Yo, yeah. Spicy, um, so really quick before we get out of here, I know you got two courses. You got, or is it more than two courses? I, know I have you got the 90 a day program, then I have the six week course. Okay. And then the 90 day is a self guided? 90 day is working directly with me. So the 90 day is like you are ready to immerse your life and have love uh, within 90 days. Like, okay. let's go get it. Okay. The um, And that's for couples as well. Like the couples counseling is also 90 days. Mm. The uh, Spicy E course is for um, people who want like, the information that just said at an accelerated rate in a classroom setting. So singles and couples have different courses? Or? Singles and couples, uh, uh, everybody gets the spicy method. Okay. But the singles and couples always, if they're doing me hands-on, are going to do 90 days. Okay. But then I also have a six-week class that's in a group setting for people who can't maybe necessarily afford the one-on-one -on -one, yeah yeah right so there's a huge price difference i'm okay. not gonna lie about that <laughs> where can uh where can everybody find you you guys can go to the spicy life.com um you guys can also listen to my podcast the spicy life where i'm giving relationship advice and interviewing other uh relationship professionals in my industry uh and you can also go to um yeah my youtube of course but you can always play with my twitter or stroke my ig at spicy Mari. Okay, well, Spicy, listen, thank you for the amazing conversation. Mm -hmm. It was so... Thank you guys for asking your questions. Uh, so informative, so spicy. Spice. Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, was, one more time, tell us what Spicy stands for again. One more time. Self, passion, intimacy, communication, and learning to say yes. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. it was amazing. And I hope you guys really took notes. I know I'm going to watch this episode back. <laughs> until I die. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys um, follow us on all social platforms. Subscribe to our channels on YouTube and all major podcasts. Yes, sir. Streaming platforms at Nice and Eat the Podcast. Um, let us know what you thought about the episode. Drop in the comments right now. What, were your, what was your favorite part? And you damn sure, damn sure better follow Spicy because um, if you don't, man, you're missing out big Absolutely. time. Absolutely. All right, but uh, appreciate you guys for rocking with us. Much love, much gratitude. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. And I'm Spicy Mari. And this was another episode of Nice and Neat, and that's that on that. Peace. I'll be the one to take the risk to go and get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old and I don't got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road or else get left behind. Yeah. To the honest pledge allegiance, I stand. I'm